Hello YouTube, I'm back at it again here. This time I have the ILG B30 Universal Blower, the larger of the two that I have. Um, this one is a 7 8 horsepower motor, where the B25 is a 5 8 horsepower. This is also a 10 pole, so it's a little bit slower at 685 RPM. And I've just got done pretty much putting the, the bulk of my static face converter together for this. Um, it's still not finished. There's a lot of little details that I need to kind of clean up and perfect on it. Uh, and there's even some pieces that I still don't have. For right now, uh, just to show this working and functioning, um, I have a very basic crude version of a control for it. I literally have this toggle switch. Now this is a two position, two pole switch. And I have this rigged up so that when it is in start mode, it will actually send power to the motor and it will also energize this relay right here. And what that does is it throws the motor into star configuration or Y. Um, and that is used just to get the, the fan pretty much up to its speed. And just as it's getting right to that top end, you can kind of hear that the motor is ready to transition. And I have to manually transition it over to the run, which puts the motor in delta. Now, ideally, this would be done automatically, which it will be in the future. I'm not going to leave it like this forever. But for right now, I just wanted to be able to test it and see how it does. So I have the kilowatt meter right here. And you'll be able to see the current as this thing starts up. And also I will show the power factor and the wattage and so on. So here we go. I'll show you the control so you can see as I'm starting it. And then you'll be able to also see the kilowatt. So here we go for a start. There we are, now we're at full speed, and you can see it's only drawing a little over 3 amps. And if we go to wattage, 367 watts, 60, you know, in the 360s, um, and we're running at 0.96 for the power factor. Voltage coming into the line right now is 122, and I have the phases pretty well balanced. They're not perfect dead on, but they're within a couple of volts of each other, so for me that's good enough. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually running really nicely. I like the way this thing runs. And now I'll turn it off, and you'll see it coast down. Once I get some new bearings in this thing, it'll really sound nice and quiet and smooth, but I don't think they sound terrible for being the original bearings. Just have a slight little bit of roughness to them. And um, one thing I wanted to add with this, and this is why I really don't like the setup that I have right here, if I don't switch this uh, very quickly from start to run, if I kind of pause in the middle and then go, if, I'm not sure the exact reason why this happens, but um, I guess the capacitors have a chance to charge up by themselves while the motor's still spinning. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's this very large discharge that goes across these contacts and at one point, I didn't realize it was happening at first, 
But um, at one point, I heard the motor make this odd sound, and I turned everything off. And I went, when I went to start it again, in the start sequence, so in, in um, star configuration, the motor actually started spinning the opposite direction. So I stopped it, and I said, well, what the heck? Like, how would it reverse the direction without switching the leads around? It's a three-phase motor. Like, it should go the same direction that it was going before. So I tried it on just going straight to delta from a dead stop, and it actually went the correct direction. So I took the... I figured maybe something's wrong with the relay. So I took the relay out and I swapped it with the relay out of the B25. Popped that in and it worked fine. So I figured, okay, there's definitely something wrong with this relay. So I popped it apart and it turns out that one of the contacts had welded itself together. Now, I am aware that this is not the best thing to be using for this. This relay is rated for 10 amps, which is fine for this motor. But it's really not designed to be having these large capacitor charges go across those contacts like that. So uh, I am aware that it's not the ideal setup. But it does work for what my needs are with it. And if it becomes a problem, I'll do something different. Um, but I noticed that if you switch the switch really quickly, there's not as much of a arc that happens. But if you go really slow... For whatever reason, there's this huge arc. You can actually you can hear it when it when it switches. Um, so that's one thing. That's another reason I really want to get this changed. Um, the switch doesn't have the most positive action to it. It's an older switch, and uh, going from start to run, if you just even hesitate a little bit and then go to run, uh, it, the the relay does not like it at all. So um, that's one thing I just wanted to add in there. But other than that, this thing really works good. I'm very satisfied with the phase balancing. I have a three phase voltage meter and I know it looks wonderful and homemade with this electrical tape wrapped around and the heat shrink and everything. But um I have these leads or these uh, alligator clips on the end and uh, I can just attach these to the three phases on whatever it is I want to check and I can see with this the balance between the three phases all at one time. I can do live time so if I'm changing capacitors if I want to um, maybe I just want to alter the capacitance in one, between two of the phases just slightly, I can watch in live time with this, and as I change it, I can see what these voltages do. So I can really try to get the capacitors as balanced as possible so those voltages are nice and even, and it just runs ideally that way. You don't want to have major imbalances in the voltages between your phases. So um, anyway... I'm going to do one more shot of this thing starting up and running a little bit from the other side so you can see the blower wheel turning. Alright, so now we're going to go for a start from the uh, intake side of this thing. Now this blower wheel on the outside diameter is about 16 inches around and on the inside it's probably around 14 inches. So this inlet's about 14 inch diameter. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start up. And you can, again, see the kilowatt meter in the lower side of the screen right here. Here we go. And that's its regular running speed. Now one last thing I think I want to do, just to show you the difference uh, between running this the way I have the converter set up and the way that it would start without the star delta starter set up on here. Uh, we're going to just start this thing up in delta from a dead stop and you're going to see how much current this thing pulls. 
pulls an enormous amount of inrush current. It really doesn't like doing this, and I'm not going to do it to it too many times, but I figured one time for video is not going to hurt. So, uh, let me see. I'm going to try to, there we go, slow that down. So, here we go. We're going to start off right on Delta. Keep your eye on that uh, kilowatt meter. Here we go. So you can see it peaked out somewhere around 22 amps, and uh, that's a big difference from what it draws when you have the Star Delta starter on it. So I'm definitely glad that I have the converter set up the way I do. Now this does not have any start capacitors at all on this. It's just strictly using the Star Delta starter method to get this up to speed. So anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this. It was definitely a fun little project and I'm sure there's going to be more on it in the future because as with pretty much all of my projects, they're never ever done. I get it so far and then I decide I want to change something or I think of a better way to do something. To me that's all the fun in it. You know, you just try different things and learn the whole way through. So anyway. Thanks for watching. Please, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe to my channel and have a fantastic day.